the meeting is yours. All right, we we'll call the meeting of the Carpentry Land Trust uh, to order here. It's Tuesday, February 21st, 6 30 p.m. Uh, the meeting has been posted in accordance with open meeting rules. And the first thing on uh, our agenda uh, is a call to order, make sure we have a quorum. So I will start with uh, Jack. Jack Donovan. Rory Carmody. Lynn Carlson. Jenna O'Dell. Linda Brennan. Glenn Underwood. Joyce Peretta. Okay, so we have a, a quorum and we have some other guests uh, and uh, we'll let them introduce themselves as we, uh, so everybody knows who's sitting at the table who's here. Mm -hmm. uh, go. Yeah. <laughs> Larry Manier, I've uh, volunteered to uh, assist with the maintenance and especially signs. So I brought a bunch of sample signs to show you tonight uh, what, what's available. Okay. I am Charles Vacher. I've been a resident of Carpentry for since the year 2000. I am involved with a bunch of other volunteers through the Patuxent Valley Preservation and Historical Society Cemetery Group. And what we do is we go to the numerous uh, cemeteries in Carpentry and in West Warwick as well. And not only do we clean out cemeteries, we do monument restoration, uh, all volunteer. Um, a lot of the materials we use, we personally purchase ourselves, things like that. So it, it's my intention without going too much further, and I can speak a little later. Um, I'm a big believer in uh, team effort. Um, and it occurred to me in reading your charges that three of your four charges would certainly fit into what our mission is as well. So I'd like to speak to you about that this evening. Okay. okay. I'm Roy Najeki from the Rhode Island Land Trust Council. And I'm a member of the Gloucester Land Trust. And we are trying, at least the Royal Land Trust Council our members, are trying to make rounds of all the land trusts in the state. And it's one of the oh, perfect. Of COVID is behind us. It's the third one I've been to this fourth one this month now. Oh, wow. wow. Busy stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you know, I have a few items on the agenda that I could address. In all right, great. All right, John, can you do the evacuation instructions? Yes. So um, either of the two doors to my left and right, you go out, you take a left um, outside the building. Okay. All right. Um, first, let's get the approval of the minutes from the December 20th. That was the amended minutes. Did everyone have a chance to uh, see the amendments and the corrections that we had discussed at the last meeting? Mm -hmm. All right. I'll entertain a motion to... Um, approve the amended December 20th, 2022 meeting minutes. So moved. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor except the amended minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? So voted. All right. Next set of minutes are the January 17th, 2023 minutes. Did everyone get a chance to look at those? Yes. All right. I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes as printed. I'll make a motion. The motion has been made. Do I hear a second? Second. Any uh, discussion? All those in favor of approving the January 17, 2023 minutes, say aye. 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 Any, uh, any opposed? So voted. Okay. Um, so a couple of uh, going down our regular agenda here. Some of it will be just moving through pretty quick. Land trust budget. Um, John, any updates on that? I did. I think I copied correctly yes. all the notes. Um, yes. So um, Glenn had forwarded everything that we talked about at the last meeting um, to uh, the planning director. And the planning director is now just compiling all of those figures and figuring them in to the bigger planning department uh, budget. So um, that's underway. Eventually, that'll be forwarded to the manager who will then give it to the council to vote on. So no super big updates right now, other than we're moving forward. Okay. All right, uh, next on our agenda, outreach avenues to encourage organized volunteers. Any updates from uh, any groups? I um, just spoke with Dr. Pothier, who's head of the Envirothon at the Coventry High School. Um, I asked her about uh, uh, support doing our land trust days in October. She thinks she probably has eight or nine students who are willing to do that. 
Um, they're on vacation this week or else they would have been joining us. But just I, I'm told I'd get back to her because maybe there's some opportunity for us to do a, a trail cleanup or something prior to that, just mm -hmm. to keep them in, interested. Okay. Any other updates from anybody? All right. Uh, website. Next agenda item 5.3, Land Trust website page, updates, content. Um, so uh, last month, um, Jenna had brought to the meeting um, various uh, informational sheets for members of the public, and I uh, forwarded those to IT, and they uploaded them to the site. So all of that information is now up there. Mm -hmm. Great. And any time that you have any feedback or have something you want to lead, lead to it's a uh, uh, discussion. Um, important calendar of dates. Um, obviously, we got our land trust days in October. Um, we do have our, what we were doing for the Earth Day set. And is everyone still good with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other dates that we want to throw on our calendar for activities that we need to monitor or stay part of where is the um conference uh uri mm -hmm. that's Should coming up does did everyone get the updates and stuff from the for the the conference the, the land and water summit conference the dates we talked about this at the last meeting if there's been anything new since last meeting no. i haven't heard anything no nothing nothing new it's still it's, everything's the same I think it's fifty-five dollars to participate. Yeah, and we said that we would reimburse members to attend if they so desire to mm -hmm. seek reimbursement. Yeah, it's April eighth, April eighth, from nine to one in a building called um, the Center for Biotechnology and Life Sciences. We call it CBL Acid Room. Right? What I can do is I'll forward to Gail just in case you haven't gotten um, the stuff from the Rhode Island Land Trust Council. They published the, the the notice of that to help advertise it out to. So I'll send it to Gail so she can send. It. And I would also suggest that everybody that wants to get on to the Rhode Island Land Trust Council that we can then we might be able to go to the emails and pick up the emails and get yeah so that way. You will get all that they they publish quite a bit of stuff. So if you're not on their distribution list, um, they, they, at least twice a week, it seems like I get something or and a lot of it's good updates for what's going on around us in the state. So if we're interested in, in attending, um, do we need to keep count of how many people are going to go so that we don't? I don't. Think, as long as we're not discussing land trust business, our own personal business. We're fine. We're, it's not you. We can attend conferences together as long okay. as we don't discuss any. But I was talking in terms of um, <clears throat> getting reimbursed for it. Do you? I mean, if there's all of us are going to go, is that going to break the break the budget? budget? I, I would encourage as many people as going. I'm not going to be able to go. Okay. So um, I don't think it will break our. Okay. It'd be the end of the world if we spent an extra okay. fifty five for someone else to additional go. Okay. So. Can we ask um, a couple of kids from the high school if they want to go? I took my niece like two years ago when she was part of the marathon. She really enjoyed it. I think they can sign sign up for that. Okay. Um, obviously, we can't reimburse right. on that part. Maybe we would just they might have it. funds for that. All right, I'll ask Dr. Pop here about that. Yeah, because I think the registration cutoff date is in March. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think I started in. So we'll, we'll make sure everybody. Okay. Potential properties of interest. There's anything I know we've got several pieces that we're going to talk about under old business. Uh, has any new potential properties come forth to anybody? Has anybody seen anything new? I did a search on land for sale in Coventry, and there's very few parcels right currently right now out there on the on the market. Of anything that we'd, you know, would fit in our scope. So, grant opportunities. We had some 
distribution. Rory had Rory, you want to speak about? Well, I, we saw the the Cornell grant uh, was up, uh, and I, I know it's a quick turnaround time, but I wasn't sure if, if we wanted to apply for anything under either um, using the mapping system, drones, or getting the kids involved. If people had ideas that tried to write something. I had another idea. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking at those grant at that grant and the resources they provided. Wonderful resource. Um, mm -hmm. One of them was a GIS mapping source to show what like birds intersected with our properties, what the Nature Conservancy considers our properties. Like, are they good quality? Are they um, kind of pushing forward habitat connectivity, which is basically ensuring that there's a corridor of, across the continent for species to migrate through. So the good thing is that three of the four properties that we allow to hike, uh, meaning every single one except for Whipple falls within a corridor, which is great. And I think we could use the funds for management fees um, for potential bird habitat um, restoration work and management. And one of them I was thinking of, well, there's two I was thinking of. One would be just uh, pulling invasive species, which is just a lot of labor work. Mm -hmm. So that would be something good for the high school. Um, but getting tools and gloves, because one of the species we really need to pull is called multiflora rose. Nasty, mm -hmm. nasty species. Roses have thorns, and this one is no different. And I have horror stories of them. <laughs> but the other thing I was thinking of is maybe doing a controlled burn. This is something BM does, and I'd be happy to get in touch with them. But controlled burns are really good for the environment. Um, they're, they help release seeds for species that are what we call fire obligate. It's like pitch pine, which is at Stella Hall needs fire. Otherwise, it seasonally will not come out of the cones and you get nothing growing. It would also help with the invasives potentially. Like it could burn away the multiflora. It also would burn any um, like dead and down material that mm -hmm. is collecting that if we don't burn could lead to a crown fire. And a crown fire is those big, scary wildfires. When DM does a controlled bird, it's very low, like duff fire, which is just like the leaves and stuff on top of it. So those are the two areas I was thinking of. And considering how dry um, our summers have been, um, I think fires are now more in our consciousness here in Rhode Island, yeah. whereas we used to be such a wet area it was you know we weren't thinking about forest fires as much as some other areas of the country but that might be yeah and Stella Hall and Whipple which both could create interesting situations regarding management of people um mm -hmm. could benefit from burn mm -hmm. Stella Hall naturally has been is created by burns that's how we have pitch pines um Whipple has just a lot of dead and down material, but we have to consider that there's a lot of residential and commercial property right. like mm -hmm. right around the edge, which is a problem. Yeah. Mayor speeches. Yeah. Uh, Roy Najeki, speaking uh, for the Gloucester Land, kind of Gloucester Land Trust. We did a controlled burn on our Steer Hill property some years ago, which is when we burned about mm, 25, 30 acres. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a controlled burn. Uh, Working through the Department of you know, EDM's Forest Environment, they organized it and they contacted the local volunteer fire departments because that enables them to get training hours mm -hmm. as well. And we had like six fire departments there with our burn. Very successful, it worked very well uh, controlling undergrowth, the invasive species, the autumn olive. And uh, it, it, you know, we did it in uh, ours, we did it in uh, in late October. Or so, and uh, the next spring, it's like, Amazing, different the growth coming up. And we're hoping to do another one that's got uh, again, that's a smoke issue, is an issue if, you, if your property is next to a residential area or near a road and such. So, uh, on that one, but uh, yeah, and those are uh, things that the uh, they look forward to because of the training opportunities that the local park. So, the, need. the question back yeah. on the grant how what application on the grant do we need for? Doing for the control burn, or I, I like the idea of the other invasives and you yeah. know, the gloves and supplies and stuff to actually have a program to, that we can develop going forward. Um, so I was thinking it would be, and this would be something we'd have to find out from DM um, 
perhaps like police details to prevent people from accessing the property, from interfering with fire engines that need to get in, okay. things like that. Okay. Yeah, we're done. The grant opportunities. Uh, the Rhode Island Land Trust Council has a mini grant out right now for the end of March, up to three thousand dollars. Welcome you to the stand, really, uh, for say help assist land trust with finalizing a deal, say surveys, closing costs, uh, you know, lawyers' fees, that sort of stuff. There to uh, help uh, you know, make it, make the deal happen. I said, finish it up there, and uh, that was. Uh, we had gotten a gift to enable us to do this mini grant because DEM is no longer doing the mini grants. That's history there. So, uh, that's another good opportunity. So, uh, mm -hmm. and also uh, the federal legislation passed last autumn there. There's going to be literally billions of dollars out coming out for conservation land acquisition mm -hmm. in the next year. We're keeping an eye on that and seeing how it, uh, when it does happen, how we take advantage of it. For, uh, you know, for open space protection, probably forest land protection. Yeah. Okay. I'll be uh, a good chunk of money available. Mm -hmm. All right, so going back to the one that we need to turn around right away, um, I think what we'd have to do, Rory, you're familiar with the application mm -hmm. and stuff. Do you think with what Jenna just gave you and mm -hmm. you can have some some work with her on con yeah. conversations that we yeah. we because I think both 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 of those opportunities that Jenna just brought up are something that we would be interested in, and it'd be, you know, obviously the the bigger thing. And I know the DM is going to do a controlled burn over at Nicholas Farm um, this year. We're um, doing four controlled burns this year. Yeah, so it's it's one of those things that, and out there it's miles between houses and stuff, and right. but um, uh, you know, neighborhoods get really scared when they smell smoke and. So it's going to be done properly with proper notice and things, and I'm, well, at least the DMs experienced right. at this. Which the grant could also help fund, like probably send mailers or mm -hmm. I don't know, something to tell them. Okay, I think that's works, Lynn. I had a couple ideas. One of which was, um, and I don't, Jenna would be able to speak to this better with that little field that's on the Sullivan property. When we walked it, we saw that little field. I don't know the, the there was a mini I mean one of the grants is for five thousand dollars, right? Is that the mm -hmm. amount we're talking about? Yep. Which would be to like clear that little <clears throat> field or make it more habitable by putting up birdhouses or something like that, being able to buy houses for the for the types of birds that you would be able to identify there. That was just yeah. another thought that I had that would be something really small and we might be able to accomplish in a short amount of time. And you could get a couple of bluebird houses. Mm -hmm. This could work. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe implement a mowing program. Mm. We don't want to keep it too, too short, though. I don't think the habitat is big enough to make it really short for the birds that like short grass to benefit from. But it was like maybe a foot or two tall, which is just a perfect amount. Yeah. I had done some, I had contacted Audubon about you know like how to maintain a field and they had said if you just mow it um once a year or once every two years usually in the fall they recommended um once everything's through with the nesting area and then that maintains it as a field because it um prevents the shrubs to start from starting you know the progression so um the other thing i had thought about with that field is that um, we could look for money to partner with the Wild Plant Society and see if they can go in and help us um, create more of a natural habitat as far as natural, black, you know, local grasses and local plants. And, you know, they might be able to help us do something like that. That would be wonderful. Because the grasses that are probably there are certainly not native. I was looking on the satellite imagery of the site from about like 10 years ago, and it's all nice turf grass. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, there's a uh, publication now from oh, 10 years ago, done 15 years ago, uh, Northeast Consortium of uh, uh, Property you know, Public Lands Managers. 
and how to maintain uh, fields and such. And we uh, part of it was written by DM run out. And the bottom line is that and so, so we adopt we in Gloucester we maintain about 50 acres of fields. Now we have we have 2200 acres open space that we own another 600 acres we have an easement on. Uh, so that we just mow by our rules from mid-October to early April. And uh, that's it to uh, otherwise you're interfering with the uh, ground nesting birds. And uh, in some fields we wait till November because we're also concerned with the uh, uh, the monarch butterflies that so means the mm -hmm. their habitat which is late in a season there. Uh, but I'll forward you a copy of that. Oh, it's, it's a book there. Yeah. It's a good guideline, it's science basic and gives you the guidelines there. And we mow every two years primarily to control the invasives. And we did one field that we had, uh, it was an apple orchard that converted to a orchard of multi uh, multiple rows and autumn olive. Right. We cleared that out with the NRCS grant. And we had that back in the day. And then we planted the warm season grasses and wildflower mix on the top of that there. So, mm -hmm. and uh, that came up. Spec Inc. to see where we started it and ended it. Mm -hmm. day and night there, so. uh, but the uh, the warm season grasses can be expensive there. And we didn't get them through the Royal White Panels in our society. We got them from uh, uh, the source out in Amherst, Mass, we could call there. So, um, but uh, those kind of things are you know, doable there. And uh, it's the mowing season. You got to be the only thing we mow in the summertime is the walking paths. That's it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. So, Rory, do you have enough uh, info to? I think so. Yeah. Make a make a attempt there. To... Yep. We do have Hope Meadow, yeah. <laughs> which we could maybe, you know, do some work in. Yeah, the Parks and Rec maintain that though well they maintain you know the main area that we've been planning to go on but hope meadow is definitely land trust and historical link with nathaniel green i don't know if that's documented we didn't hear from well nathaniel green is probably not involved necessarily yeah. on hope meadow but it might well have been a place where militia drilled yeah, he was he was with another different militia, so he, he wasn't with a guy for a coffee. <laughs> right. But that's all right. So we'll jump back onto to the right. brand opportunities and bring it back. But just with things like Hope Hope Meadow, where Parks and Rec is already maintaining and mowing that on their schedule. Yeah, of, right, they do mow it, but they you know it is always versus you know rex claiming the whole well, other that's area a whole other whistle, you know right. it's there um but i don't think the the that particular area is something that we want to step on people's feet on other than marking right. the trail a little bit better like we're going to do mm -hmm. for our uh, land trust days all right so rory's you've got to go ahead um, okay, to, to work through that and you can reach out to Jenner a little bit on the, the, the wording or support information that okay. you we'll need but those are I think a, a great start um it would be nice to, to get our properties free of some of these invasives but they're really going to move fast on us all right library joint programming and displays Joyce you were given a mission to talk to Megan I think you've been working Jenna yeah. with uh <laughs> right. Joyce introduced me to okay. with that director, okay. yeah. you know, and ideas for her. I, I yeah. did bring several books from the library tonight. <laughs> you yeah. know, the, the uh, state the natural resources, the uh, Francis Underwood, who's Brown botanist and did Big River, you know, survey. I was just thinking, you know, maybe they could come on our land. So we are a part of, you know, this is early promotion as mm -hmm. such of the area and the the natural history survey every 10 years i think the state does the natural history survey and they pick an area so this was plants and it's every little plant in all its names that you could want you know that they've cataloged and whether they are threatened or in danger or extinct <laughs> what was the other one? oh yeah 
And then we have Champion Trees. I don't know if you've seen this book. Mm -hmm. And we did have one, I think, on Station Street, right mm -hmm. near Payne. Is it still there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are a couple here in Coventry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might want them. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Jenna, you we saw some this. interaction yeah. with Megan. Yeah. yeah. So Joyce introduced me to Megan. Black Oak Champion Crew. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we took a look at the schedule for that display case they have in the middle that you see when you walk in. And we are going to have control of that display case for the month of April. Oh, wow. Which okay. will be perfect timing for um, bird migration, spring green up. Everyone's getting outside because it's nice. What we're going to do is we're going to do a display of like some books. Um, Megan was looking into maybe like some puppets, like of foxes and things like that. Um, just to really encourage people to go outside. And there will be reference books on top. Um, I found these in my backyard. These are chestnut seed tucks. So. Little hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> thought they were hedgehogs. <laughs> anyway, um, there aren't any chestnuts on our properties as far as I'm aware. Anyone can pick them up if they'd like. They're very quickly. But I think these would just show that there's really cool trees all around us in Rhode Island. And mm -hmm. by encouraging people to get out on our properties, we're encouraging them to go outside and see the cool things out there. Mm. And yeah, a children's display. Chestnuts. You know, I, I wasn't thinking children's display case. I was thinking adult. It is the but adult display something case. like this would mm -hmm. work with children they um, have their own display case mm -hmm. that's true yeah but well, the display case for in the children's room is um usually occupied by children's um Those collections right yeah. right i right. know it usually yeah. is but nonetheless you know if they look there <clears throat> so right. you know right. it's child oriented one other thing i was thinking that uh the library in the, the hallway there has a monitor and they often have different displays. I wonder if it's possible, um, and we might have to reach out to our IT guy um, that does a good job, and, and Megan, to see if we could take every so often have a spool of our drone footage mm -hmm. in the, the properties and mm -hmm. the property map because it's like that's like a great advertisement yeah people sit mm -hmm. in that hallway yes. a lot yes Not that always. entrance yeah. uh, video that we have right. and I think that would be a great thing so some mm -hmm. of the stuff that we're doing right there while people are waiting oh what's that in Carpenter Land Trust and then we've mm -hmm. got two drone footage yeah two videos now we can oh, show right right yeah. that would be great yeah that would be Cody I suppose yeah, yeah. Cody that could works work on that I mean, we've got the, mm -hmm. we can work with John and everything to get the material mm -hmm. over there. And if we can get Megan to say, all right, let's, let's spiel, mm -hmm. um, use that opportunity um, for joint advertising. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Does Green Library have? They don't often have their monitor on. And I, that's, but this would be another opportunity though, to, to run on their monitor at the library because mm. that, that's, they are, been not used as much as what it could be but they did get a similar monitor as what we have out in the hallway in this one mm -hmm. so we can ask megan because that'd be another great place just to run you know the, a loop with sure right. some of the stuff for us mm -hmm. so what's what's the size of this display case is it um, it's four feet wide i think maybe yeah. Feet four feet. Feet. yeah yeah it's all and it's it's <laughs> right as kind of in the center of the, yeah. of the space so okay. you walk in and it's it's right in front of you yeah right now it has paintings of carpentry and snow in it right so are those things that you can like mount on a phone board or something and then hang in the display case or i don't know i was thinking of just putting them like this okay yeah okay so yeah then... librarians are really they love realia, right? Um, Very that's a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> library. I used to work at the library. So um, you have a real thing there to kind of attract attention is always yeah. a... It had a real spider a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. All right. So that's. I think that's great. We, we really want to, as, as Sally was mentioning, when you partner together, you get a lot more power. And they have an opportunity with a lot of people flowing through the library that mm -hmm. could stop being in a, a source for us to get some of our message to for, for free. So mm -hmm. I think that's great. And we'll work on, I'll see Megan next next week anyways, and I'll talk about the, the screen out of green and see if we can start getting 
some of the stuff along with the the maps of our property and things that you know right. that we're we're putting on the website if we can just have an organized mm -hmm. thing that they can plug in and run what if um thinking about that display would something like this be an appropriate thing to put in i think it's always important That's to remind good. people yeah. about so, yeah. so should I give this to somebody who's going to be yeah, you give it to uh, you? Of course, it's usually at the library. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Joyce. Not as much. Okay. Yeah. But it's another message, though, that you know, if a picture of that's taken and that you know, when they're scrolling their messages, that they remind people, you know, because it's it's like anything. People walk from there, they go right out on the Trestle Trail because of the way the connection mm -hmm. is and is ticks right on you know walking right at the edge of the trail you know right. ticks mm -hmm. and they are bad this year already and yeah that. yeah my dog said three so far oh wow mm -hmm. so that's that's also good messaging all right anything else for joint programming okay. um, good work and thank you jennifer yeah. for reaching out for yeah. maybe getting us to april yeah yeah that's joyce who introduced me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be great by the children. Okay, let's yes, go with definitely. old uh, business property updates. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything new that we need to discuss about Grasset property other than we still own it? We own it. <laughs> we own it. <laughs> All right, so that may be an opportunity for after we get through um, Whipple property this year and um, marking a couple of trails, we should probably schedule a walk. Just to have an idea what that uh, you know, so everybody gets a feel again of the mm -hmm. the terrain and and the people that haven't visited uh, can go with us. So um, as soon as we get out a little bit out of the the mud season um, and we get past our um, Earth Day weekend, maybe we can schedule something for early May um, to take a walk through there. And, it's a really nice property and just so everybody gets a feel as for what kind of work ahead of us we'll have on that so that's a one great accomplishment for us uh, to acquire that was a 15 acre property in the eastern end of town which is it's rare rare it's probably with one of the larger undeveloped parcels of in eastern carpentry that we were able to secure the rhododendrons will be blooming. Yes, that's true. That's it's just massive in there. <laughs> there oh, that's in May. Okay, so that leads us next to Boxdale property. So um, I talked to the director, and him and I are kind of on the same um, same path as how we move forward with this. So um, what we need to do is much like before. I know we had preliminary discussions with the town council regarding this land donation. Um, but it was kind of always on the back burner. The Grasset property was always the um, the priority. Um, and it was kind of like, oh, well, yeah, this land donation will come someday. So now that we're there, I do think it would be a good idea just to have, um, you know, just a quick check in with the town council regarding that saying, hey, this is what we want to do thumbs up, thumbs down, let us know. In the meantime, um, my plan is to uh, start reaching out to different land surveyors, starting to get pricing um, for uh, their services because this would have to be, um, go through the administrative subdivision process um, through um, our planning office. It's relatively quick and simple, um, but it does require a surveyor's map. Um, so, while we're waiting to get scheduled on the council agenda, I can start doing that like work behind the scenes and um, getting those pricings. That way, once the council gives us the go ahead, we're already ready. Um, there is one thing um, that the director and I flagged. Um, we just have to do a little bit more research and possibly run it by the uh, town solicitor. And that is, um, there is not enough frontage by zoning standards for that 15 acre parcel. And the um, advice that we had gotten in the past from the prior solicitor was anytime you move any sort of lot line, the resulting lot 
has to be conforming in every way. This lot will not have that. It will still be non-conforming by road frontage. So there might be um, just an extra step in there where we have to do some sort of variance. Um, but again, uh, we're, we're doing more research on that to figure out if we need that extra step or not. It shouldn't add any more time because the two processes would be happening concurrently. Um, but that's the only outstanding item that we need to figure out. So, okay. So what we, I can do, I'll reach out to George again to make sure mm -hmm. that he's back in the country and, or still ready to go with the, yep. as we've talked. And then what we need for the council would be a map of yep. that little piece of mm -hmm. land that we're looking for a donation and probably more from the Herb's perspective of the steps and requirements and yeah. the solicitor as for what it would yep. take for us. So to... I, I think it's pretty simple, just uh, a memo generated from this department as to the steps. Um, and then, like you said, the map and go back to the council. A lot of the legwork's been done. We have okay. a memo from the prior solicitor regarding um, this uh, land donation. So it's not a surprise to anybody. It's just a... a you know, reintroducing it to the council, especially given that we have a new member, and just making sure that everybody's on the same page before we get too far gone and start spending money and then somebody puts the brakes on. Okay. All right. All right. So we can work on that now. Good. All right. David Hayes property on Maple Valley Road. Any update? So um I uh told you, Glenn, I did reach out to um the uh lawyer and the realtor for that and um just explain to them where we were in the in the whole process um and they said yep that's fine we're going to leave it on the market they're not going to take it off the market but um that uh they look forward to hearing back from us um when i had spoke to the solicitor about the process um he did mention that um, he would have done things a little bit differently looking back at the process for the Grasser property and the acquisition of that. So I said, absolutely no problem. Um, ultimately, it's you know his name on the line. <laughs> so I said, I'll, I'll forward to you um, kind of thoughts, ideas about what I believe the process should be. And you can give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, however you want to do it. Um, I did send that memo to the uh uh town manager and the solicitor um let them know what we've done um so far in the process and what needs to occur um the solicitor has been lobbying it back and forth to the assistant solicitor and um i don't have an answer as of yet as to this getting scheduled um all i can say is that both me and the director have been um checking in with them weekly to see if there's any update. We just don't have any information with them uh, from them as of yet. So it, it resides with them at this point, the, the solicitor's office and the manager's office to get this scheduled. The sign is still up. <laughs> I drove by it. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, this, is, this goes back to um, streamlining process. So we're not tangled up wait, yep. waiting on solicitors and stuff as her you know, and I think the council needs to approve a, a, a process so we don't get, you know, obviously someone else may come along and buy the property right. um, before, and this one being on one of the major feeders for Johnson's Pond has a lot of priority and for the, the members of the town. So um, if there's, if the solicitor can't, you know, move this sooner, um, you know, I think we need to press mm -hmm. to say that, you know, we're not going to be very happy with our town solicitor. Yeah, no, um, definitely. I, I we, will say we've got a dollar amount that they're absolutely. agreed to take. Right. And um, I will say, um, it, and it, it has, it, this isn't um, specific to the land trust. There are um, a couple of items that uh, we in planning are, are just waiting for answers on. I just think it's a case of, um, uh, I know it's drives. a new they just came on right, there they're system. trying to get their footing yeah. um and I did relay that um this is a property that is on the market so time is of the essence so okay 
All right. Um, any other questions on that property? All right. The next one was the Mende property where we're looking at uh, development rights and appraisal for development rights. Mm -hmm. Me again. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so I uh, reached out. Um, as you're all aware, um, we need three bids um, from uh, qualified appraisers. Um, I did reach out to five people just to make sure that, you know, if, if somebody dropped off or if uh, it was unresponsive, that we'd uh, not run into any issues. I did hear back from two of them, and then I should be hearing back from the other one. Um, they said by next week. So that is certainly underway. Um, it, it was helpful this time that uh, I already kind of had a rapport with a bunch of them. Um, we've already done this twice so far. So um, they're uh, much more responsive this time. So good. by next meeting, we'll be good to go. All right. Uh, work session, Rhode Island nursery landscaping. Any update, Gloria? Nope, I haven't heard back from Mason yet. All right, keep on uh, moving down the agenda here. Drones, huh? so we're up to section seven, yep. ongoing discussion. Drones, I saw Craig uh this week at a conference and he's excited about doing more of your drone work with us, so I thought that was good. Good, yeah, I would think that uh, um, for our um. Land trust days again. That would be an ideal, yep. great, great opportunity to add some more footage to our. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, boundary markers. I did not install any yet, so that's on me to get a couple up that we wanted to get up on the trestle trail. They're still in my car, and I did not do it yet. We will work on a bigger group, if not on Earth Day day. Our day that we're doing our work there to also bring the drill with us to install a couple while we're on the properties. Might be something we get the high school students involved in. Too. Yeah, it will, it will be handy. The two two things, and we'll talk about trail work because uh, from our d discussion last month with uh, Jenna's finding of our one of our trail conditions here, that I think there would be a great opportunity because carrying like carrying the chainsaw that far into the woods and stuff, uh, you know, I've done it, but mm -hmm. it's a long ways to go with tools that mm -hmm. deep into the woods without having extra hands to yep. carry some tools and things. So that um, will be a great opportunity for mm -hmm. them to help us with. If I may, this is uh, yeah. examples of using lobster. Oh yeah, yes sir. We've got a we've got nice yellow ones that are yeah we've got on past season around so oh, you can look at yeah. And that one on your left hand is the newest one we just got last week. Oh, we'll yeah. use on road frontage or property or flex in the oh, like backyard. Oh, yeah, okay. yes, yes, that's <laughs> always. You know, you yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's great. Signs. Mm -hmm. signs. Oh, really? I like that there's a phone number. Ah. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting, that's I think, in, the, in our next batch that we could always put a phone number and that way mm -hmm. they would say, well, if I have an issue, mm -hmm. with, um, the problem we've had with our phone use is often we've got. Uh, a uh, an imaginary line going through the woods, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And say it's say it's a quarter of a mile between the corners there, trying to figure a straight line up and down the hills and such. And now we you have a, uh, mm -hmm. when we've acquired the property, we have a spec that for our class one survey that we have to survey and put uh, points online. It's called every 150 feet piece of rebar right on the line. And uh, so that we can find it, you know, mm -hmm. done the yeah. the signs up. Also, um, with the class one survey, we haven't we haven't really done out the uh, sorry, it's part of the, the map there where every the class one survey you don't have to put a granite boundary or any monument at a corner, every corner, you only need three. So, if your piece of property is shaped like an octagon, there's only three points in the ground out there. And everything else is imaginary. And so we said, we're talking about our, part of our specs is you've got to put a monument, a rebar, granite boundary, drill hole, whatever, an like iron pipe at each change in direction. Mm -hmm. And if and if the line is greater than 150 feet, there's got to be a point on the line. And I want a table on the map with GPS coordinates mm -hmm. where everything is. So I can go, so go out there with the GPS. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, so. And, uh, yeah, that's it's good. Much more, but 
It's when well worth it. When you're out in the woods here trying to find a line, and where is it? Mm -hmm. I, I did one of your properties. I came over some, like just around COVID hit, and I was trying to, it's around here, but there's no barbed wire. There's nothing to distinguish it where on this ledge the line exactly is. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, but that, that really, you know, okay. it took us 20 years to come to that realization. No, no, that's a very good point. Surveys, uh, yeah. some sort of, you know, Points out line and talk to story. Oh, yeah, so this problem. Oh, okay. Added a couple of hundred dollars to the survey for us. So, yeah, no, but definitely the monumentation and the GPS points are, are then, then it gives you something to put these up. Yeah, you need to know where you want. Yeah. Put them on your neighbor's property. Um, perfect. Um, so, yeah, we, we will at least get the easy stuff done that we know. You know that we don't need surveyors help and, and stuff but the entrances along the roads and stuff so people realize in the long Crystal trail we wanted to do that um kiosks no updates okay i don't think we had any signs many updates we're time larry <laughs> show yours <laughs> that's great yeah so I, a couple of weeks ago, I realized I volunteer for three different organizations, all of them can use signs. So this was a good enough excuse to do what I've always wanted to do, which was to buy a, a, a CNC machine. <laughs> and uh, new toy. So, oops. So I bought this machine. Uh, Wow, nice. A couple of weeks ago, and um, started uh, learning it and making lots of mistakes. And as they say, when you're learning, you end up making a lot of firewood. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've got a lot of samples to show you, some of which have mistakes. Um, actually, I started out. Uh, doing it by hand with a bunch of templates uh this was this was a manual template using a regular carpenter's uh router and you can see it's kind of ragged and so forth that's that's the difference between a machine created uh sign and not so here's one of the and all these lens suggested oh, wow. lens great. suggested uh yeah. <laughs> Using uh, your creative uh, yes, trail name. Yeah. Trail. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, so this one uses, and the number of bits that you can use on mm -hmm. CNC is unbelievable. There's a zillion of them. So this is a, a, a flat bottom uh, kind of bit. This is a uh, this is a round bottom bit. This is on a two before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the technique is you just spray the letters. And then take a soft, a, a, a firm foam roller with brown and just go over it and you don't get the paint down in there. If you're careful, you don't get right. the paint down there. And um, let's leave here. So then I started playing around and uh, said, well, what, what would a large one sign look like? And uh, you know, I just made up something, and oh, also, also, Lynn gave me the logo, yeah. which we traced, mm -hmm. and uh, then we did a, a, a fancier logo. Ooh. Oh, nice! Thing. Oh, yeah, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Just to see, uh, you know, that would look good at Stella Hall. Stay down here. You have the water at Stella Hall. That would be perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So these can be. I first tried one on PVC. You can do it on PVC. You can do it on. Uh, uh, What's the hard plat? Hard plat? Uh, Laminate? EDM? No. What is it? MDF? MDF. MDF. You can do it on MDF. You, this is just regular pine painted white. Um, you and put that in the April display case. That's yeah. 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 That would be perfect. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Display yeah. Case. Like well, that. do a nicer like version. Cool. Okay. okay. These, are like all, yeah. these are all just practice yeah. pieces. They're so pretty. Uh, Each member of the land trust should have one to post, put on the front door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, here was just a little sign. Yeah, I small, smaller, uh, okay, smaller uh, font, and uh, then uh, Lynn suggested. Uh, I was asking her about a. Uh, uh, Jenna would like that. It's kind of thin, so I said, well, why not? Maybe maybe they make a thicker plastic, but this didn't work out at all. So mm -hmm. I think yeah, there's a different kind of plastic. Oh, yeah. You could even wrap it around. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You put a screw here, screw here, and wrap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay to attach these right to trees. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the we've birches had are fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're not much bigger than that. They die. So we could work uh, off your lists. Yeah, of yeah, create yeah. The different signs for the different things. Especially that for the ones that so, are very prominent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These machines can also do uh, relief uh, maps. So Lynn produced a what's called a style file. Here's one for Bowden. And oh, this wow. is a oh. relief. Uh, yeah. And then here's one for grasses. Wow. Uh, now, this is only three quarters of an inch high, but mm -hmm. you can make them much thicker. Sure. So uh, you see a lot more relief. Yeah. What, what's the difference in elevation here? Is it? I don't know off the top of my head. Like 100 feet or yeah, something? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there so, is the steep elevation at Grasset. You know, it's almost yeah. perpendicular. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right, right there. I think that's yeah. also got to yeah. use yeah. perpendicular. Folks who are uh, so you know these shelter. can be yeah. my machine can go at fifteen to thirty inches so we could make much larger ones and maybe mm -hmm. you can do it the software allows you to do it in slices so say you wanted to make it five inches high you could do five one inch layers and stack them on top of each other and wow. make mm -hmm. quite a I I know they use these in museums a lot I guess right. for terrain right. models. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, uh, I got a uh, a uh, I don't know what oh here it is. Been very busy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, quite out. Uh, oh yes, I meant to mention. Um, I researched it on the web and came across this wonderful document from Maryland. On how to do signs and park and writing, yeah, yeah, yeah. at least what yeah. their standards are, mm -hmm. yeah. and they even give you all the instructions for how to set up your router and everything. Oh wow, <laughs> it's just amazing! So yeah. uh, that's some interesting standards that, uh, especially when it comes to things like uh, if you're going to have a right arrow, you put it on the right side. If you have a left arrow, you put it on the left side. Mm -hmm. the left side. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, also, um, as, as you also know, I have a 24 inch uh, plotter. So I've been plotting. This is a sign I did for my daughter's farm. Uh, but this is uh, polypropylene and self adhesive. Oh, you can very peel good. this back here. Uh -huh. So you can stick it on anything. Uh -huh. And uh, I did these uh, signs. Their, their farm is Brookfield Farm. Uh -huh. This is just regular old corrugated plastic. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so I've been making a uh, regular yard signs, 18 by 24 mm -hmm. yard signs with an H frame. Mm -hmm. So like when you have land trust days, if you want to have a sign uh -huh. announcing yeah. land trust or something uh -huh. like that, they can do a bunch of those, one or two sided. And um, also you can put a uh, what's called a drag knife uh, on this uh, router which is just a tiny little uh exacto knife that uh you turn you don't let the uh spindle spin and you can trace you can make uh, oh, signs cool. and this is vinyl regular yep. vinyl like you see on signs on windows and on cars and trucks hmm. and so what you do is you put once you uh, cut it out, see there's another one right on here. Another one here. I did oh. did two of them, well, and nice. then you take this transfer film, put it on there, and that pulls the vinyl off, and then you put it on what you want to put it. Oh, and that's cool. how you 
that's how they transfer vinyl to windows and cars mm -hmm. and so forth. So if you want to make some uh, land trust mugs or uh, you name it, <laughs> yeah, right. the sky's the limit. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. as creative as you can come up with. And I can, I don't have the ideas, but I can do it. So come up the ideas. So I'm ready to start uh, cranking them out. You give me uh, what you want to do. Yeah. And uh, we'll That's make incredible. some time. Yeah. yeah. That was really impressive. Fun. That's wonderful. Thank, Thank you, Larry. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, this, this the signage for the trails are going to be important because that's the other thing is, is when you walk into like the Bowdoin property, as for you get a little bit confused or where the white trail, you know, the, Unless you've been there before, right? Yeah. yeah. Where is it? Where you know? Because yeah. it's it's difficult, but with with a, a signage mm -hmm. installed. And these are dirt cheap. You know, I right. mean, uh, this this wood is maybe thirty cents a foot, fifty cents mm -hmm. a foot, and that's the only cost, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some paint, mm -hmm. a little pine. bit of paint. Do they yeah. recommend what type of wood to use for endurance? What type of wood to use for endurance? Well, these are fine, yeah. but. Uh, I really like, I, I use a lot of oak from uh, uh, Thompson Native Lumber and Upkinton. Uh, they, you can get uh, full dimension lumber there. One, one by fours are real nice. And oak, I just, I just built on my daughter's farm. I just built five raised beards out of oak from, mm -hmm. from there because it lasts a lot longer than right. the pine. If you want to go with cedar or something like that, the prices are out of sight. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think our plus also I uh, I use a sealers like shellac and uh, clear coat and other kinds of sealers. Uh, none of them will last forever, but uh, I don't know what else what else to do uh, other than going with uh, <laughs> aluminum or something like that. So your machine works on aluminum too, as well as wood, or just wood. It, it it can wow. engrave on a lemon. Oh, that's cool. Oh, the other thing this machine can do, you can put a laser on it, a laser a current cutter yep. or butter, so you can engrave le leather and wow. burn. Remember remember when we were growing up, we used to have wood burning? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can do that. Oh, uh, cool. But yeah, it can, can engrave aluminum. Hmm. No, not, not steel. I, I think by the same time you bought your CNC, I got mine too. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. Cumberland Land Trust wanted to make them sign. I haven't gotten to there, but uh, <clears throat> we're looking the same, doing the same thing. We're also experimenting with um, uh, core plastic, which is one of the things you've got there that they yeah. corrugated plastic. Right? Yeah. And uh, which is the uh, political side, the art side. But oh, right, uh, right, right. to uh, uh, Bory Graphics and uh, West War Award there. And we're the Glossy Land Trust getting a, a bunch of signs with one big temp, one big sheet, you know, trail signs, signs of trail. You are here, the map, and turn it where you are on, on the trail junctions and that sort of stuff. Laying it all out using a Adobe Illustrator software, and graphics, getting the big sheet, just you know, with their uh, utility knife, cutting out the parts you want, using your construction adhesive. You know, gluing it to a piece of plywood, putting it up on the tree or the, the post at a four by four post at a trail junction, doing it that uh, way. And the signs would be, uh, you won't see the plastic because the whole background would be the uh, uh, the brown color is called uh, Lodge Brown. Lodge Brown. Uh, <laughs> this yeah. is espresso. <laughs> how, how, how are you printing? I mean, how are you printing? Well, we bring the, the PDF of my, say, my four by eight, four foot by eight foot sign, okay? Right. Which is like, Got the 30 40 signs on it. Printer, they print it up for 100 dollars and we just cut out the parts that you know, look inside signs and just glue it to uh outdoor uh quality uh plywood again, brown, so it looks like natural wood mm -hmm. and just you know using lag bolts attached to trees and such or, or to a four by four posts. Or if you're doing a post, really do a uh, a vertical sign so that this the name. On the uh, the four by four post is vertical. It eliminates a uh, vandalism. Somebody can't grab the sign and rob it oh, yeah. because mm -hmm. it's just integral with the post itself. Right. There, we've done that with the uh, I also uh, volunteer with the Appalachian Mountain Club. We mark the trails at, in Arcadia, doing that same way there. So, uh, 
uh, other land trusts like uh, East Providence went and spent money on nice fancy posts and signs. It lasted about six weeks. I think mean, they spent $3,000. It lasted no. about three weeks, four yeah. weeks. I told them no, but they, they, they had the money to burn. That's what they did. Uh, and so they replaced them all with the, the typical, typical signs that uh, you see elsewhere. So we're trying to choroplast and see how that works out. So you're printing directly on the choroplast yep. rather yep. than using a, uh, well, the, something the, like the this. Or, or graphics who makes all these little signs. They do the printing on their yeah. press and they just give me a sheet and I just with the okay. full, by, full foot sheet of plywood because it's actually choroplast plastic. Yeah. And I just do exactly when I put in, you know, straight edge, just cutting out the one they want, gluing the small signs through plywood. And yeah. Uh, eight years ago, we did the signs at Smithfield Land Trust, the Wolf Hill ones. And we did this, hold it on Microsoft Word and just lamp in this, printed them up, paper, put them in a laminating machine, glued them to like pieces of, uh, you know, small piece of plywood. They've lasted six, eight years. Well, mm -hmm. wow. well, I forgot to mention I can laminate uh, letter size and legal size. Yeah, so that, wow. that yeah. becomes yeah. That was a <laughs> cool. way of marking the trails. <laughs> okay. yeah. Eight yeah. miles of trails in one afternoon. Oh, so, wow. Wow. The, yeah, the main difference is my services are free. Yeah, <laughs> <All right. laughs> those are one. That's wonderful. I get it with the, uh, with the CNC machines. The mark will be uh, what you can now do with those things. I, yeah. those, I did the old hand route with the templates as well so mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh man and also the trails the tree signs boss signs has the tree identification signs uh mm -hmm. like i think i got 70 80 species of trees mm -hmm. and they're four by six plastic i should i had a bunch of at home that were buying from mark our probably you know as a nature trail identification mm -hmm. there so mm -hmm. larry those are beautiful yeah, yeah that's exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, decide what you want and let me know. Well, I think for our Start display trying. case, I'd like that one to uh, go right in our yeah, display case. Yeah. The round one there to go right in for, for, for the month of April. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that's, I have beaver, beaver. Yeah. beaver dam, you know, in a washy area or oh. one of our oh, land yeah. trusts. The yeah. Stella Hall, there's Stella an old yeah. beaver dam. Yep, well, I can make a, a a better version of this then. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Start make with a beaver. Huh? You make a beaver dam. Beaver, and a beaver. Is, do you have a logo? <laughs> is it in your logo? No, no. that's that's the logo. Is this no, that's, the, that's, that's the logo. logo. That's yeah, that's yeah. yeah, I think yeah. that'd be nice sitting in our display case with the various yeah. other stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering okay. if maybe for our next meeting we should have an agenda item of making a list of the signs we'd like yeah. to have. Yeah, and what mm -hmm. direction you want the arrows and stuff. I mean, I don't know what that's for all the properties, but mm -hmm. for Bowden, I would think that would yes. be a priority. Right. I think it's a priority for Bowden. Up, though. Up yeah. there right. the week. Yes, we right. need the, the Never more and... people getting lost. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I think the thing to do is is to, to focus on Bowden with the signage. Um, and then it's, uh, uh, we we following on this idea of uh, on a four before, we also the letters could be put vertically yeah. on here oh, and uh, line it bolted to a four yeah. to four. Uh -huh. yeah, you really want to save it. Yeah. Yeah. Could you use yeah. a sign like that that just says Bowden on the bypass? Mm -hmm. Because it's just like an entrance and yeah, into the woods. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't know what could be in the woods. Right. Yeah, so let's come up with a list of signage for, for Larry for the Bowden property mm -hmm. and um put that for our pass for next meeting. So Larry has something to, to work mm -hmm. on. Right. Give them um, what we need based on our walks, and um, and we'll need the arrows and different directions, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and okay. So that, that, let's work on that one first. Mm -hmm. Glenn, any idea of uh, the sign for Jenna Sullivan being able to go in? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we got to get the holes put in the ground. Right. Yeah. That was... Yeah. We. I think we we worked a little bit hoping the town was going to help, help us mm -hmm. to to do it, and that hasn't happened yet. Okay. But the the worst case scenario will be when I get a chance to bring one of our machines down to be able to dig the the holes there. Okay. I had to see if I can do with my brother to help me. Probably the best way to do it is just schedule with him versus trying to set up and then just with Jack and Dennis and with the supplies that we, we have to. 
this is something we can do. <laughs> you know, versus the boundary markers is the survey right? You know, what's involved in getting the survey done? <laughs> yeah. We could, yeah, when we when there's a possibility of the sign going to get vandalized, we'll just make a couple of extras. So the minute one goes down, you know, <laughs> just like cleaning up graffiti. If you keep cleaning it up pretty soon, yeah, they give up, up after a while. <laughs> Well, you know, populate the whole town with land trusts. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever teenage boy wants to have a land trust, will already have one. We'll see them on eBay. But, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Larry. And, and so next meeting, our mission is to give you signs to make. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. All right. Next thing on the agenda is general trail system uh, maintenance and improvements. And this is part of it with the signage is a big part. And the second part is actually cleaning up um, uh, on the Bowdoin property, um, the, the stuff that Jenna found, plus I'm sure there's more there's stuff more. That, that has fallen since then and the other. I was there yesterday actually, and I met a, a guy going the other way and he commented about how many trees were on down on the trail. Like, I think I saw three down and 10 feet of each other. It was pretty bad. And this is just going right in from? No, this was on um the, I think it's the blue trail. If you go in and you make a left at the fourth, okay, you keep going, keep on going. Then you take a high trail, and then you go up as if you're trying to get to the trap stream. So on the way, but it's on the white trail. That yes, yeah, so it's ultimately on the white trail. That yeah, I didn't clean because I did the other section, but I'm sure more as well. That we've got the problem with the gypsy mouth oaks. That whole area is just they just right now are just coming right down. We can give the wood to Larry and he can wait. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. But there is good news. I did check. Um, and it, what I thought was lanternfly eggs were not actually oh, no, they're, 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 they're just like it. Okay. Once yeah. you get really close to people. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. That's good news. Okay. Whipple uh, Land Trust, a uh, task sheet. Um, so in the past, Dennis managed a, a task sheet and started uh, right about six months in advance. Mm -hmm. We are now at mm -hmm. getting close to six months in advance. We did a little bit more than that. Um, so I will send that out to everybody for our next meeting, the, a blank, um, but basically using what Dennis had used for formats and then what we did in the past is said, mm -hmm. sign up for the different activities on that uh, task sheet and make sure that we got our ducks in a row as for what we're gonna, how we're gonna set this all up for um, the, the Whipple. And, you know, I think we gotta start thinking strategically which entrance area, obviously the off of Sandy Bottom Road going in from going across there, you got much easier, more space in that parking lot than than the other entrance um and hopefully the construction will be more further along by then yeah i don't know how many years has it been it's been three years so it'll be right in the parking lot yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah it's a little damp you know it's when i went at christmas time my wife and my children we would walking through there just to trudge the, the trails there and that, that turning in through those stuff is mm -hmm. just like if you're not careful Oh yeah, right yeah. now getting it's tough. T boned real quick. Yep. Um, hopefully that will be cleared up for for that time. If not, we will ask uh, in advance that they do something so people can turn in there without the fear of being clobbered. Are we going to do anything for the um, Earth Day? Are we just going to invite people to gather and help us clear? Are we going to like provide any drinks or anything like that? Or are we just we can bring a I I will bring a cooler of water. Okay. Cold water. So we have that. And that's gonna be at Bowden, right? Yeah. We decided that's will be our, our big focus to get that back in condition so we don't lose it and get the trails and um it may also be time time wise with looking at getting some of the signage into position to right. the trails. So 
Uh, what was our date on that? It was April 22nd. And are we going to maybe what, from oh, 9 to 12? Yeah. 22nd, 9 to 12. And what about um, a list of helpful tools? Um, so for everybody, well, since we're, we're, for both of these, any of these projects, the helpful tools, I'm going to bring a chainsaw. We'll need people with some, you know, smaller hand saws and clippers. Um, I don't know, probably a shovel, you know, Jack usually brings his rakes and shovels and stuff and loads up his truck with stuff. So I put a variety of things, yeah. you know, I think our big mission down through there is is again the the cleanup of the the trees and the down trees. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then doing um lining them up and lining the up some on the edges to yeah. the areas that with the trail sort of disappears right now or is mm -hmm. difficult, especially through that stone area. We need to figure out what mm -hmm. um but with some of these sign capabilities now that we may have, mm -hmm. there might be some other ideas that we come up with that we can get either a metal stake in the ground where it's, you know, you're through that rock patch, there's no trees or anything, but you got to walk across it. Um, so we've got to take a real good look while we're out there to say, you know, this is where people will lose the trail that have never been there. Oh, no. Yeah, it's tough there, very tough. And then we can figure out what kind of a sign because there are no trees left in, in that area to really to stick them, you know, your trail marks or, mm -hmm. you know, that that's the big thing. They're too far apart right. because there's nothing there. So we might have to drive them um, a metal stake and then put one of these signs attached to it. At least it'd be really simple because if it was a metal stake with the white bar or whatever for the trail, it mm -hmm. would keep you going. So. so, yeah, for other tools, I mean, I think everybody, you know, I'll, I will have a train as well. So, um, be the big part. I'm trying to get the kids from the high school to that too, and that might just be another project they can get involved in. Yeah, yeah if you could get them, that that would be the biggest help yep. because that one's, you know, we'll get a lot more done in the three hours um, yep. with with some help, especially moving some of the pieces of you know, mm -hmm. logs after you cut them up or whatever. I'll send that to her tomorrow yeah. if we can't get something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, anything else so on the task sheet you know everybody was involved uh this past year pretty much with doing stuff and for the event you know have our little pop-up tent tables and chairs and brochures and um, water and then do the, the walk around the drone footage so there's really nothing unless someone can think of something new that we need to add to the task list. It's going to probably be almost a duplicate of the task list, just putting our names back down onto it. So yeah. I think they've all the couple that we've done went come up fairly well. So unfortunately, I won't be. We'll be in Italy. No, oh, well, we'll excuse <laughs> you for that. You better do a walk in the oh, woods yeah, yeah, yeah. for us. Then. Bring back some wine. <laughs> yeah, have a lot of um, GIS mapping. Any updates? Um, yeah. So, um, well, I don't have anything to show for it, but I've started on the inventory of the properties of all the parcels in town to score them according to our task sheet. So I've started the process, but I don't have anything to show for it. Okay. Um, but hopefully, you know, maybe in, within the next couple of meetings or so, I'll have a way to show you online um, a, a digital version of, of the scoring of the properties and can hash that out. And then we'd also talked about having a working meeting for that effort. So, mm -hmm. but I'll put something together um, and then we can go from there. Okay. Um, the other thing that I worked on was um, with the Grasset property, uh, I went ahead and used the GIS program to, I don't, I don't think I made enough copies for everybody, but um, if you, um, so this is the elevation and the background black and white is just the elevation and 
I just randomly picked um, some destination points. Mm -hmm. So when we go out there for our site walk, we'll want to, you know, mark with GPS where we want people to get to. Mm -hmm. And then you can use the GIS program to start at the parking lot and say, okay, um, how do I get to that point? What's the, what's the path that will take me the, with the least cost? In this case, the cost being the slope. And it will automatically um, draw the path for you to say, this is the way you should go if you want to eliminate, you know, having to traverse slopes from point A to point B. So again, these are just random points that I picked out for demonstration purposes. Um, I don't think there's anything particular at these locations that anybody would want to see, because I haven't even ever been out to the property before, but. Mm -hmm. um, so again, this is just a demonstration of what we can do for planning out a uh, site walk and or um, once we have destinations that we want people to get to, we can have the computer sort of draw the line for us and then yeah. we can put those on a, on a GIS map or a GPS when we're out there trying to carve out the trails to start with. Um, yeah, and you can make other... So in addition to slope, I can layer these, the costs. So um, if you wanted to, you know, if we want to map out or include heavily vegetated areas or something as a higher cost, then we can add that to the slope so that the, the path will be routed around those, those higher cost areas. Um, higher cost, meaning to traverse them. So you can see on here what I, I had it avoid the, because initially it wanted the, the slope wanted to go down and go right into the water. Mm. So I drew a green boundary around the water to say, no, you can't go, don't go down into that area because it's all marshy. And then I drew a line where the brook was to say, no, don't, you have to go over the brook to get to point two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So avoid that, you know, that's a barrier. So it, you can put any cost surfaces that you want in there and add them all together and the program will choose the best way to get around. So those from point A to point B. So yeah, so capabilities there, we just need to get out there and, and figure out what we wanna do. And this can also be used on the, uh, the Sullivan property when we wanna, if we wanna get the trails to go figure out where to go yep. to the further north in that mm -hmm. in that property area. Mm -hmm. The trick is to find out the destination. Yeah. Where do you right. want to go? Right. So, so you <laughs> haven't walked any existing trails? On on Sullivan, yeah, we have. No, but not on Grasset. Right. On Grasset, no. I haven't ever been there. No, so no. what we're going to do is um, for putting on for our next uh, meetings agenda, setting a schedule to walk that property mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm in may or whatever so we can everybody gets a feel of it um, so that's that will help lynn on as we walk through there just as a work session to, and we can get a feel for it right on the yeah right right on on those, Larry, really yeah. 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 yeah all right okay. thanks lynn no. try to like pull the path you're still all mm. <laughs> or bushwalk pass Okay, new business 2023 membership dues. Yep. Um, just, what, what just I want. trying to catch up. Um, so so there was a request um for renewal um to pay the uh membership dues. I don't think I have to ask um if you guys want to. Um, but if you guys just want to have a vote to um, move forward with that um to pay those dues. Um, What's uh what do we figure that our contribution this yep. year so this. um the uh uh standard in in the past was uh, 150 dollars mm -hmm. so i hear a motion to uh renew our membership to the rhode island land trust council for 150 dollars so more okay. second. Second. second any uh further discussion all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. oh so voted great so john you can process that out um We'll do Linda stuff, and then I know Charlie wants to talk, and and um, for a couple of let's see, yeah, we just got public comment left, and then I've got some some questions too, and and while we have another expert in the world of um, 
not that you know we can't go just into too many specifics because it's not really an agenda item, but public area. Mm -hmm. We can certainly ask a, a few questions or, or things. Yeah, yeah. Vote or anything. yeah. So we'll we'll move on in one second. So agenda items for March. Um, just the signage. Signage. All right. Just so signage. Signage. And that's we that's just carrying. We can actually just continue on because it's on our agenda anyway. So yeah, we need to have a new new topic. That's just where we're going to work with Larry. Anything else uh, upcoming that we will carry everything over? I think on on this agenda. So and we'll just add um, the Grasset property work session scheduling. Yep, scheduling a, a work session on the Grasset property. Okay. So I, I think we were trying to have a presentation by you. Where did you have information yeah, you wanted? You wanted me to talk now? Um, we're going to move. I'm always ready to talk. Waiting. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're in the public comments, so now we're going to be a great time for okay. Charlotte. And do we have anyone out in the, the world there too? There's the tool chief. Yes. Okay. So we do have a person. So uh, Charlie, why don't you start with all right with your I will try to be brief. I've already told you what we're all about. Um, but uh, sitting here listening to your meeting, I took time out today to look at your um, charges. Uh, you have four, th four charges, uh, three of them, and probably a fourth we could probably meet with what we do regarding cemetery preservation work. Um, what would interest this group probably is um, the work we did in Manchester in Pine Grove cemeteries. Does everyone know where those are located? Yeah. So if you're coming out of 116 um, and you're facing 117, to the right of you is the cemetery Woodland. It's got a big monument, yeah. Byron Reed. Byron Reed was a big mortician, among other things. And that's Woodland. That's not the cemetery we're talking about. There's a cemetery across the street that you can see the beginnings of. That's Manchester. Manchester goes deep in the woods over there, across the Greenway mm -hmm. and to the left. Uh, and it straddles your property, by the way. Mm -hmm. To the right, there's a stone wall that you step down from. There's conveniently a step in that stone wall, believe it or not. Um, you don't have to jump. Um, that is Pine Grove. That is the cemetery that Byron Reed's brother, Henry, bought to further their funeral services, which I won't go into detail, but it's a fascinating history as to what uh, Byron Reed accomplished. Um, we spent 12 years in those two cemeteries, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, 12 years? No, I'm sorry. Seven years, 2012 to 2019. And we're still in there just like maintaining. We cleaned out the cemetery. There were areas in there that were completely not only overgrown, but the landscape that the town hired was blowing leaves, completely hiding stones. We um, repaired or restored about a, over a thousand monuments. Um, mm. That's what took us so long. And so our thought is, and, and there's like a core of like five to seven of us that form this cemetery group. We're all volunteers. Our thought is to have the town participate more on this. Where could the land trust come in? Uh, already we have people going in there for passive recreation. So it could be incorporated more or less as part of the Merrill Whipple site. Okay, you have people going in there in Merrill Whipple, you're talking about further de developing it for passive recreation. Uh, already we have people going in there People love to go in there and just walk, uh, love to go in there walking their dogs. They even go in there and they notice a lot of the stones and everything. That cemetery isn't really rich on, um, there's a lot of 
significant monuments, but the symbolism, not so much, but there's that big obelisk that's the Stephen Harkness stone right in the center there. That's magnificent. It's the largest, highest obelisk in all of Coventry cemeteries. Mm. So it's a very interesting place. Uh, the maintenance that would be required in there, because that's on perpetual care of the town of Coventry, is during any, given any type of storm, a lot of branches come down. There are also some dead trees in there that the town tries to help us out with at times, uh, but doesn't. Uh, and the town is great. Public Works has been great with us. Okay. In fact, if you go to Maple Road right now, which I'm going to tell you about, um, there's a loader in there. At one time, um, Maureen Buffy, who I call the cemetery lady, she really spearheads uh, a lot of this. She had all the town's loaders in uh, Manchester and Pine Grove. They own about three or four of them. All of them were located there, and we managed to fill all of them up with refuse. So that gives you an idea. Um, I could tell you more about the history. The history is fascinating. So we do tours in these cemeteries. Um, somebody mentioned uh, plants and stuff. There is the black. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like it. Uh, the black uh, walnut uh, trees, which uh, they drop those. They look like tennis balls. Yep. But mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of those in there. Okay, and there's a lot of other types of trees. Uh, Maureen actually found an almond tree in Maple Root. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that's interesting. And she's found some other interesting things. They eventually also become refuge for birds and animals. Seen a lot of deer in there, a mm -hmm. lot of birds, things like that. So, you know, we're looking to team up with the the uh, the land trust your group. I I've also had thoughts of the conservation commission. Uh, we actually there is a statewide conference, the second consecutive year that the statewide is doing. Uh, this year they're calling it restoration and awareness of cemeteries, and, and we're beginning to uh, do a schedule that's going to begin the first week of April. Uh, going through the last week of May. We flag veteran cemeteries too, by the way. Hmm. That, uh, there, I think there are over 500 veterans buried in cemeteries. And by the way, there are 200 known cemeteries in Carpentry. There's another 50 that I call lost to the ages, but we've actually located four of those. Okay. One's right in your yeah, neighborhood. I okay, like right at Cape Wood. Yeah. Right under everyone's nose, there was this old yeah. farm, field stone cemetery right in the woods there. Okay. Mm. Uh, the other, the our main thrust right now is Maple Root, the old Maple Root, which is a fascinating cemetery, dates back to shortly after the King Philip's War. Okay. We believe there are burials in there that go back to the late 1600s. It was a common burial ground, the best known burial ground that everyone's familiar with. There's the one in Newport as you're entering. You know, uh, there's uh, God's little acre, yeah. yep. but that's a common burial ground, okay? And there's a lot of famous people buried there. The symbolism is um, in Maple Rue is found nowhere else, on the stones is found nowhere else. Hmm. So uh, does everyone know where that is? Right across from the Baptist Church. You'd almost have to be common toast not to notice that cemetery. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's a complex of five cemeteries, by the way. There's Plainland. There's still bearing people there. Um, there is Maple Root, which we're working in. There's Little Maple Root on Hill Farm Road. And there's a little teensy one. Did I say five, four cemeteries? Uh, there's a little one uh, just beyond the church in the woods there. If you blink your eyes, you're going to miss it. So, um, and that's right along the old, I believe, the reservoir. The old, uh, uh, is that Quidnick Reservoir? Quidnick Reservoir. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, 
And if you look on the other side, in fact, I said to the minister in there, he goes, oh, there's a magnificent stone wall. And sure enough, there is. There's a stone wall that straddles Gridnick Reservoir below these cemeteries. And there's, you can walk along there. So, so that's, that's our thought. Now, you also mentioned about burning. And I said, oh, my God. So if you're going to burn in Nichols Farm, believe it or not, there's a great cemetery in there, number 135. It's the Mary Rice lot. Uh, um, lot. It's in a tree knoll. I have never visited that cemetery, um, but it's there. It's a bunch of field stones, but the Mary Rice stone is one of the most historically significant stones. It's a magnificent stone. It's It was... Uh, carved by a guy by the name of Jonathan Stevens. We know very little about Jonathan. Um, oh, by the way, Pine Grove in Manchester, two of the most prominent um, area carvers are buried in those cemeteries. Has anyone be, ever been in Manchester, the one with the big globe? That's Frank Richmond. He was a carver. And then Oral Spencer is buried in Pine Grove. Right next to his two wives, one wife on one side and another wife on the other. <laughs> so, so, Charlie, I think one big opportunity coming up yeah. this year, since we're doing Whipple property as our land trust day, right. that if we combine some resources that and add junk tour of those cemeteries, since people were right. walking, so... Mm -hmm. If your group is willing to participate, I think that will, a lot of people, as we know, are interested. And in when is that? October 14th. 14th. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So we, uh, last year, Western Rhode Island Civic Historical Society, which is the Payne House on Station Street, did a paid tour that was very, very successful of Pine Grove. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we're doing a paid tour of Manchester. Okay, which is the one above. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, we we would be willing to participate in a tour. I'd have to run it by everyone be, uh, regarding Manchester. Uh, but part of the one in Pine Grove, we pointed to things in. Manchester, there's a family plot of the white zincs. Those are the metal metallic stones. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen, you probably have seen them and say, gee, but that's a weird looking tombstone. They're made out of uh, metal. Um, and also we pointed out the Richmond stone and the Hockness stone. So yeah, we'd be, we'd be interested in doing that mm -hmm. um, with your group. Um, so I don't know where else uh, you could see that we could like, um, you know, mesh our resources and, and our efforts and things like that. Probably on some of your many properties, there are cemeteries. Yes, we often have a cemetery in a site walk, not that we end up owning the property, but you know, right. places we then have cemeteries. And by the way, there are cemeteries in the woods that you find stones sticking out of the ground and you think nothing of it. Those are field stones. That's a cemetery. Hmm. All right. There is one uh, off of Piggy Lane hmm. uh, behind someone's house mm -hmm. that's not mocked. It's not signed. Hmm. Um, but um, but it's in, uh, I brought the Sterling book with me. This uh, is available at the library, non-circulating. Right. John Sterling and uh, another person uh, did a survey in the late 90s of all the cemeteries. Mm -hmm. So there is schematics or maps of just about every cemetery. Right. If you have the number, then you can get the burial sites, and many are unmarked. And we have also, Maureen and other people have taken GPS readings of cemeteries. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Hmm. So uh, my purpose tonight is to make you aware of what we're doing. If we could team up, so to speak, um, great, the more the merrier. Um, you know, we'll even teach you how to repair monuments. How's that? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's not as difficult as you might think. <laughs> but we do have a couple of real master craftsmen, uh, Bob Chorney and Colin Parkhurst. Colin used to be head of the Cranston Cemetery Commission. So, um, in fact, Colin knows how to frame. He knows how to frame uh, bases, which came in very useful in a little cemetery we did off of 116 called the Krupp lot. So, so well, I think, Charlie, the, the thing, the, the Whipple days would be really interesting because I think we'd be able to draw in some more people. That okay. Uh -huh. from, and I think the other thing is in your um, research, if you find that on Coventry land trust properties, we do have um, cemeteries anywhere that you come up in your yeah. research, you know, let us know and then we'll be more than mm -hmm. willing to work to make sure that they're preserved and um, right. focused so they don't disappear. Because the, the town has not always done a great job about uh, mapping out these cemeteries. Mm -hmm. In fact, we discovered that one of the cemeteries that was described in Sterling's book is now part of somebody's basement on Tiffany Drive. Uh, okay, and there's another one over in Red Red Oak um, <laughs> Estates that we think it's underneath someone's house. Mm. Okay, and there is one from the 1600s right by St. John and Paul's School. Saint John That's and not from 1600s. I know what you're talking about. This, yeah, it was. It's not, I come out into the wilderness. That was the part of the old, you know, I come in. That was the part of the old Arnold Farm. Ah, mm -hmm. ah. Yeah. In fact. In fact, we worked on one on Lowell Street that's right in the hook. It's in that someone's backyard uh, that dates back to the 1700s. Hmm. So who so, owns these cemeteries? That's a very good question. <laughs> um, that is an extremely good question. So what happens when, uh, for example, Maple Root used to be part of Maple Root Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, Maple Root Baptist Church decided to abandon the cemetery. And I think that's what formed Little Maple Root, which is, they're still burying people in, okay. which is on Hill Farm Road. Right. Maple Street? To the top. Maple Street? No. Off Maple Street? No, this is Maple Root, which oh. is on Hockney Hill. Corner Road. Hockney Hill, okay. Hill Farm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So near what is now, the more yeah. difficult one is what. Um, so if you go to, um, well, the one on Lowell, Lowell Avenue, that's right a block away from St. John and Paul Church. Mm -hmm. So that actually belongs to a gentleman who lives up on the hilly part of Lowell Avenue. It's his backyard. And it's still technically on his property, but the town, I believe, and Maureen could probably describe this better than I can, takes it and takes off some of your assessment okay, yeah. because it's a cemetery. Right, you can't. But you're under no obligation, to, unfortunately, yeah. to take care of that cemetery. Um, so in essence, most of these cemeteries yeah. are just hanging there. Nobody, well, 42 of the 200 are cared for by public works, uh, not by public works, but by the town through an independent contractor who just is required to go in there and uh, cut the underbrush. Um, Pine Grove and Manchester and Woodland, they, um, they clean up the leaves, okay? Um, but it's, it's um, they don't repair the stones, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I spoke to the owner of Woodland the other day, a guy by the name of Jerry Carlston, who's a grave digger. Uh, basically, that's what his occupation is. And he owns all of Woodland. And he has 300 more available lots in there, he tells me. So... Hmm. Um, so, um, so it's it's that's the reason we do what we do. We we feel we have it. We like doing this stuff. We have a sense of history. Uh, 
you know, some of us like cleaning up the, I know Maureen likes a lopping and raking while Bob, Charney and Colin, they, they don't want any parts of that. They like repairing the monuments. I'm a little of the in-between. <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll go back and then I want to turn over a few minutes. Yeah, I'm sorry if I took too much time. No, so I, I think the opportunity since we will be at Whipple to, to visit those cemeteries and, and get some um, publicity for your group and things that right. you've done. Uh, uh -huh. That's a great. And then also if you do your research and find anything on right. Coventry Land Trust properties, any cemeteries, then that would be an opportunity to work mm -hmm. with us and, and right. making sure that they're preserved. If, if your group wants like a tour of these cemeteries, all you would have to do is just name a date and we can show you what we've done in, the, in these cemeteries and and you can get an idea and a feel as to how it kind of meshes in with your property, especially Whipple and then over at Quidnick Reservoir, which you really don't have a property over there. I realize that. But I got I own a cemetery. Oh my property. Just sort of cemetery, uh, husband and wife, very next to each other. Uh, and they uh, being late 1850s, the cemetery. Their last names are spelled differently. <laughs> They're doing it phonetically back then. Um, and uh, we've met up with one of our town properties on like Conservation Mission Owens. We found one two weeks ago. Oh, wow. That our cemetery have been trying to find. This is the old books written back in the 1930s, mm -hmm. like 100 feet south of such and such road. Well, you go out here, you don't see it. We found it. Found are it. you from Gloucester? Yes. Bill Brown found Bill, one deep Bill in the woods. Yeah, he definitely. put it on Facebook. Yeah. By the way, we have a Facebook page yeah, too. I got to be with uh, you know, Betty and Carlos Mangucci. Yes. Betty that restored our one of our. In fact, I am the attorney. Without giving attorney client uh, information, Betty and Carlo own the cemetery that's on their property in yep. Glendale, yep. Mm -hmm. and I was the attorney that. Help them with that legal yep. maneuvering. Worked with Betty many years. So, uh, yes, right on. We're one degree of separation. So, uh, <laughs> that I guess I'll throw this cemetery. I don't know. I own a cemetery owner and, and a land trust, the Constitution Commission. We own, own cemeteries and we try to you know, preserve them and hire Betty and call us to yep. pick them up because it's beyond our, uh, our qualifications to the special equipment. You need to do it right. So, uh, yeah. As I said, we found out. Basically, the high who owns it. You go to the uh, abutting properties, look at the deeds and the descriptions, and map it out. Okay, it's a carve out here. It's it's a public. It's a town cemetery. It's it's owned by that property. Right. Right there, so, hmm. yeah, a lot of work out here. There. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now you're okay. we'll give you the floor. A few things. Uh, uh, we're all over this council. We've got some upcoming uh, online and in field. Uh, Workshops, one on GIS mapping coming up, and one on actually using a GPS to go out in the field and map a trail or plan a trail. Uh, I worked in the Bedoyan one with Dennis four years ago and rerouted. I, I flagged that away from that glacial, the rocky glacial moraine going around to see that it through with that moraine. That was an ankle foot that trail. Mm -hmm. Still is. <laughs> yeah. But this, I, we mapped out and flagged a route around it all together. And, and that's where we're trying to find where is the northern boundary because it wasn't marked. There's no, you know, physical remnants of a boundary. That I say, I look for the old piece, look for a piece of barbed wire sticking through it there. But that's where, you know, teach cattle and nothing there. It was just open bridge there. Uh, so did that also. I mapped an area. This Dennis had did a trail right through the wetness. If you went 100 feet that way, you'd go around it. So uh, that kind of thing. But then COVID hit, everything kind of came to a close there for a while. Yeah. Right. But uh, so I've been out there and you know, the, on the old mill site there. Yeah, it's neat there. And uh, but, so well, we'll give some workshops, combination of Zoom and actually in the field. This is how you do this. This is what you look for. You know, I've taken some park service courses on trail mapping and and trail design and such as well as some you know tips what to avoid, what to look for, you know what psychologically works, what the public is going to go where no matter what you do, they're going to go that way. So make it work that way. You know, it's like what Disney does. They you know psychologically have to control the you know where you're going. And so uh, we're working on the state side, the legislation on. 
the Royal Nature Council, uh, that the courts were required to have a, a, a liberal interpretation of conservation easements and, 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 uh, and space regulations, such so, uh, to protect, give, give greater protection to properties. Also, we had passed in the last year the legislation, State House, uh, an act uh, giving a uh, public interest properties. So say the town of Glock, town of Cobbery opens bought a piece of land. There's no easement on it by DEM or someone else to make sure service the order on whatever. Uh, the town could, if they want to, take the property, sell it off, and such develop it. It happens in places. It's happened in uh, uh, Central Falls, and it happened in Central Falls. They took the moment they wanted it for a uh, uh, commercial. So they took the public land and sold it, and there was no restriction on it. And so there's a legislation, rather than going to a the constant conservation easement uh, routine, which is having all the meets and bounds on a deed and such, and this is it, which time consuming and could be costly if there's no survey to the property, that the town can declare such and such property is in the public interest. That locks it up from development at little to no cost to the town, just the town council make the resolution that naming these properties being the public interest. So that's how like Newport, their public parks were all open for development. And they passed that and they, they adopted that resolution. They made that South King Sound has done it, Smithfield has done it with their land trust properties to make them in the public interest. So you find more information on that on their Rhode Island Interest Council website there. Uh, we're also working on, uh, with VM on our next revision of the wetland permitting process. Uh, DM issued new rules this past summer. Uh, they intentionally took out uh, a new rules regarding trail improvements, foot trails, wetland regulations, and what you know, you know get an insignificant alteration permit. And we're working with DEM and the director Gray to get that done starting later this year. Actually, probably have in 2024 that simplified the rules and foot trails for bog bridges, that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that was one of my questions for yeah, you. We're on the league, we are, everyone is on that. Everyone's yeah. on our, so we're working on that. Yeah, they realize you don't need to have the same permit to put a bog bridge in as you do a Walmart. Right. So, uh, <laughs> basically, it is right now, it's the same rules. So, we I get to simplify for you know, a, a trail with a certain width, certain length, and such that you don't have to go through the, the hoops and uh, hurdles that you would need with a, a regular permitting process, which is getting more stricter because of the wetland setbacks have changed and such. So, and now DEM's looking, they want a 500, they want a map of 500 year flood zones and stuff. So, they can get, you know, they can get. Uh, Tricky. We uh Galatia Land Trust, we built we built uh two years we built four bridges and our permitting process only took about three months, but we whacked out the four bridges immediately after that. But uh we're trying to so the land trust council is trying to get this thing simplified to make it easier. All the land trust about they you know uh keep our names out of the newspaper in bad ways and such like you know, as no violations so to all this. So uh, so that's what we're up to legislation wise. But I come to me to see what issues you're dealing with, what other people are dealing with, so we can, you know, if we can help out and, and if it needs legislation to do so, we'll, you know, that's, that's what we're here for. So you help know, you guys do a bit, do a good job. So, anyone got any questions? Is there a state standard for uh, park and trail signage like I found in Maryland? Uh, there, uh, the land trust had a uh, it's, it was a statewide consortium of that uh, for a grant with the uh, another foundation to grant on, on, on trail signs. If you go to our Rhode Island Land Trust Council website, resources, there's trails. There was a document produced by, um, I think, I'm gonna say, not the Nature Conservancy, but the, uh, oh. Yeah, you mentioned her the group down on uh, the, the, not the wild plant society, but the uh, uh, the group that URI does the natural the natural history survey was involved in that there. So, yeah, David Gregg and the, the uh -huh. guys there. So, it's on the website. 
it's, it's on the website. Yeah, and if you can't find it, my my email address is Roy R O Y at Najeki N A J E C K I dot com. Yes, I have I'm a master of my own domain. <laughs> <laughs> and so means you should need to just email me. Hey, where's that document? I'll send you the hyperlink to that there. So, but yeah, yeah, the state had uh, there was a group that did sign uh, uh, survey project or recommendation. Where's the best place to put signs? How to do construction? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was before the CAD things came out there. So that now it's a little bit <laughs> more. Yeah. So, we're, yeah, we do a lot of signs in our properties that are not just. Trail signs, but interpretive signs. Okay, this is house site for cemetery. This is who's, you know, this is the history of this house and buried. Who's who built it? How long they lived here? That sort of stuff. There, we do, uh, you know, interpretive signs on, uh, yeah, the trail ID signs and uh, or different kind of forge growth or whatever. And, so, and we get a lot of feedback on our website and our Facebook our website, friendly that. How much did people enjoy the interpretive signs along mm. the trails? Right. Just, just they're learning something that's interesting. Yeah. Was this the West Greenwich Land Trust that did the, you really can't call it kiosks, but I guess they do call them kiosks. Yeah. The meeting houses, the one on Plain Meeting House mm -hmm. Road, mm -hmm. and then the one in that little village up there, Stone. Stepping Stone Ranch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the one that uh, I played Meeting House Road. That yeah. wasn't the land trust doing it, but I, I think those are really good. Yeah, yeah. And if you need plans for kiosks, we we got those as well. If you need plans for bog bridges, we have those as well. Really simple to build. Mm -hmm. I've built many of them so over the years. So, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, know, you whack out one in a few hours, literally. So. Is, you know, hmm. what we try to offer is advice and so it's a trail if you've got a trail one go from here to there you know uh often it's, you spend a lot more hours planning when you do constructing the last land trust i was out last week working on trails making new trails uh and we, we got, i got about seven years worth more coming down <laughs> so, you know, we have a copy of 400 acres it's a while to get yeah. stuff in there so uh, yeah. but yeah so we land trust council of the service is helping out I was helping Dennis out. Never got out back again with us to yeah. get out back in those woods there. But, uh, but that's oh, perfect. And I think uh, because we do have uh, a little bridge area that we do want to work on to yeah. on that Bowden property right. that yeah. we still yeah. need to make um, happen. So that's why I'm interested in the yeah. what yeah. kind of permitting or what because it's not. Big, but it's like anything right now. The the regulations, if you follow them step by step, are very complicated. Right, you see, right now, it's point you, you map out what you want, length, and you ask for a predetermination meeting with the and wetlands, explain the project, mm -hmm. the length, and such. It problem is that they don't want you. If you're not doing excavations, or soil move, except for seeing you know, shovels here, shovel there. Yeah. Uh, and you know what the wetlands are. That simplifies a lot of the stuff there. So that you know, you're, you're doing a, you're staying out of the wetland for the most part. You work, you, you say in an application, you're not going to, you stay out of the zone here, except the actual trail construction there. You're not excavating, you're not putting in footings and such. So it makes it easy. They're not looking at um, the design so much of the bridge. People think, oh, they want to know if it's structurally strong enough. They don't care. That's, you know, you can be making it out of pop Possible stakes, they you wouldn't <laughs> matter. You know, they're pretty much looking at what you're disturbing the, the, the wetland about there. So, uh, yeah, you know, the exact same spot you're talking about. Yeah, you know, yeah. But it's the way around it. Yeah, there's a way around it. But uh, I, at least for the most part, but generally, it's not when you, you want to apply for a significant alteration permit there. So, and it's this that's the simplest route there. You don't, if you do it well and right you don't need a survey you don't need a wetland biologist to flag it you know cumberland did one a long one and they went out and we've done a smithfield stuff without the uh uh expense of hiring these professionals out there so okay, okay. Right. Uh, we're working to make it even easier so excellent yeah, that's that's, that's great news yeah. well we certainly want to thank you for attending and, yeah. and certainly charlie uh do we have any uh People want, that want to talk for a public comment online.
raise your hand if you do. Hands raised. All right. So with that, uh, public comments over. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. <laughs> Somebody, please. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Adjourned.